Hey, good people. How's it going? Hope everyone is doing well today. Hope you're having a great day. This is Coach Cookie, your life and relationship coach. If this is your first time listening in, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you hear, please give the podcast a like, comment, and don't forget to share with family and friends. To my regular listeners, welcome back. And I want you to know that you're greatly appreciated. Here at Rising Higher, I'm going to give you some snippets for success to not only help you to survive, but to help you thrive. Now, in today's episode, I want to talk about the narcissist being a scam artist. But before we get into that, let's talk about last week's episode titled, Can the Narcissist Ever Change? Narcissism is really a set of personality traits, and the personality usually doesn't change very much over the lifespan. In order for the personality trait to change, the narcissist has to be able to change their behavior. It's a slow and long process, but it can be done with the narcissist if they're willing to self-reflect and realize they need help. If this episode sounds interesting and you would like to learn more about how the narcissist usually gets help, check out the entire episode. Again, it's called, Can the Narcissist Ever Change? So today on Cookie's Commentary, I want to take a type of a mental health moment to talk with people who are dealing with someone who may be diagnosed with schizophrenia or another type of mental illness. Now, I have a lot of experience with this because my daughter is 34 years old and she was diagnosed with schizophrenia about 16 years ago. During this journey, I have noticed that even until this day, there are loved ones and friends who have adult children that are in their teens and 20s that are in college who are struggling with the concept of the illness and how to deal with it. So they have been calling and sending me emails on the topic. So I decided to deal with the topic today on Cookie's Commentary. I have been through many trials and er errors. I really believe that by the grace of God, I have learned a lot about this illness and how to successfully deal with it. I thought it would be a good idea to bring up topic on Cookie's Commentary to assist other people who may be struggling with some issues with their loved ones who have been diagnosed with a mental illness. So today, I'm gonna give some quick tips on how to deal with this mental illness. First off, let me say to my parents who have to deal with this, this is very difficult because you may have to come to the reality that the child you raised no longer exists. It feels like you have to learn how to deal with another person altogether. No one really told me this, but After much prayer and fasting, I realized that the 16-year-old daughter that I put in the Miss America teen pageant, the daughter that was so popular in church that would sing at different people's weddings and special events, I looked for that daughter over and over again, but she never came back. This is very hard for a lot of parents or loved ones to deal with or talk about, but I need for you to go back to that unforgettable memory that you share with that loved one who is now diagnosed with a mental illness. And I want you to keep those beautiful memories with you at all times. Now I need for you to grasp your mind around the fact that that person you once knew during those great times may not come back as that person. Now, this may take some time for some people to adjust to. I get it. Been there, done that. But the real healing would take place when you wrap your mind around that. When you get to that point, you will be able to recognize how to deal with them. Once you have put your mind around that basic concept, now you're ready to start talking about that and dealing with the mental illness itself and how you're going to deal with it in that individual, and in that loved one. Usually individuals who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia or another mental illness are struggling with feelings of frustration and helplessness and may not know who to approach. It is always a great idea to reach out to them by telling them that you are concerned about them, you are willing to offer them any support that they may need. A simple way to say this would be, I understand that you have been through a lot and I just want you to know that I care about you and I'm willing to help you if you need me. Now, that is just the beginning of the communication process. It is a great idea to have a conversation with them as well. So this may seem like it's difficult, but it's not. Some people may feel awkward and not know what to say. First off, don't think about the mental illness. Block it out of your mind and hold a normal conversation with them like you would anyone else. Don't overthink it and don't be overcautious about it. During your conversation, don't worry about that distant, lukewarm response, their facial expression, or other behaviors like they're not interested. 
Remember, persons with a mental illness may not display the emotions they are feeling, and they may look like they're bored or uninterested to those around them. Don't draw attention to them or ask why they are behaving in that manner. Just take it in stride and continue the conversation like nothing is wrong. Trust me, if they don't like what you're talking about, they will let you know by giving you a negative comment, getting angry, and they'll cut you off immediately. Individuals who have been diagnosed with a mental illness are not able to identify problems and they don't know how to ask for help. I think the main reason why they don't ask for help is because they don't really understand that they really need help. Did everyone just grasp what I just said? So if they aren't able to communicate their own needs, this is the main reason why it is so important to have a healthy communication built up with someone they trust. So now let's stop and think about this for a minute. What we usually see as a problem, they may not see as a problem. Let me give you a really good example. They may leave their apartment and it's a really nice apartment. It's fully furnished. They got all the amenities and they hitchhike from one state to another state and they say they want to live in a homeless shelter until they find a new home. Then you get the call and they tell you exactly what I just said. When you talk to them, the conversation might sound something like this. Girl, are you crazy? Have you lost your damn mind? Why would you do something irresponsible like that? That sounds so stupid. You have a nice place to live. Why are you in a homeless shelter living with people you don't even know? Girl, you done lost it for real. To all my listeners out there, when you behave in this manner while dealing with someone with a, with a mental illness, you have just confused them. And believe it or not, they don't understand why you're so angry. Remember, you guys, that part of the illness is not understanding that what they're doing may be wrong. So as a result, this response will pull them further away from you and they may never go back to their home. Some of them with this mental illness may not even call you back. I believe this is one of the main reasons why people who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia stay isolated because they have a difficult time trying to determine who to call for help because they get confused about why people are so angry with them all the time. Now let's stay with the same example with the hitchhiking situation. And let's pretend that my daughter called me and told me that she hitchhiked from St. Louis to California and she's living in a homeless shelter until she gets a new place to live. This is what I would say. What? Girl? You hitchhiked from St. Louis to California? Wow. I've never done anything like that. What was that like? And why did you pick California? All oh, the beaches and the warm weather. I know. That's a, I'm, are you tired of the snow and the ice? Right. I get you. Wow. I just want you to be safe because there are a lot of people out there that are being killed by strangers. I just heard a story on the news about this 28-year-old female that got gunned down by a truck driver while she was on her way to Chicago. Girl, if something like that happened to you, it would just mess me up. I don't know what I would do. Well, I understand. Sometimes we need to make changes in life, and I'm going to wish you the best. But before you find your apartment, you need to call your landlord and tell him that you're moving so he won't mess up your credit report so you can find a new place to live. You need to decide what to do with your furniture. And don't forget to get your utilities turned off so you can get them turned on in California. Oh, and girl, don't forget your disability. You got to get your disability transferred. Okay, girl, have fun on the beach. Enjoy the warm weather. And I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Okay, I'm sure you get the idea. They may not say much, but they're listening to you when you stay calm, cool, and collected. The main idea is to give them space to think about what you told them. They will call you back because they know that you will not argue with them or put them down, and they'll feel like you'll treat them with kindness, dignity, and respect. Eventually, you should get that call back saying that there were too many steps involved in that moving process, and I think I'm gonna come back home. When they finally make it back home, tell them something like, if you still decide that you change your mind and you want to move to California, I'll be happy to be there for you to help you with the moving process so it can be a safe and pleasant transition. So now they feel like you didn't downplay them really want to move. So if they really decide later that they want to move, hopefully you'll be the first person that they call. Now this is a really good example of why it's so important for them to have a positive external stimulus to help the person think 
got to talk to them to make them think. Okay? Which in turn help them with the recovery process and move into a more functional manner of living. These were just some little small tips to get you thinking about what you're dealing with. I hope that this really helped my listeners out there who are dealing with people with mental illnesses. I love each and every one of you. And if you need to talk a little bit more about the issue or let's see if you can benefit from coaching, hit me up at heycoachcookie at gmail.com. To all my listeners out there, if you have some more tips or comments that you would like uh, to give regarding this delicate topic, we would love to hear from you so we can all grow from other people's experiences. Okay, now let's get into the main topic of the day. I know it can be extremely difficult to free yourself from the relationship with a narcissist. They hang on very tightly. They can be charming and manipulative, desperate to keep control over you. It's hard to say no when they are saying all the things you've been waiting to to hear from them for so long. Suddenly they have seen the light. You have shown them the way. It's finally happened. Losing you, well, almost losing you, was the kick in the ass that they needed to see how selfish they were. And Lord Jesus, it would never happen again. Praise God, it's a miracle. Stop it. Stop it right now. And let me go ahead and burst that bubble right now and talk to you about what is really going on with the narcissist. Think of the narcissist as putting on a theatrical performance. And the narcissist's lies are designed to trap other people into doing what the narcissist wants them to do. The lies narcissists tell are exactly what people want to hear and they're saying because they know that. They know what you want them to say and they will say it no matter what, even if it's not true. But why? Why do narcissists lie? They have no truth. All they have are lies, manipulations that go along with whatever they are trying to get you to do today. And tomorrow they will argue the exact opposite without batting an eye as long as they can win. Winning is all that they care about. So let's look at this a little bit closer. It's eight o'clock PM and the narcissist appears to be seriously apologizing for lying to you again, saying he would do anything to make it up to you because he never meant to hurt you. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. You're amazing. You're wonderful. Then at 8.30 p.m., the narcissist is insisting he never lied to you. And then you forced him to apologize to you, even though he he has done nothing wrong because you're unreasonable, controlling, and abusive. He twists everything that's been said in a way that makes it look like you're lying, that you're confused, or you're deliberately making things up. When you continue to insist this isn't true or point out that he's already admitted to lying and apologized to you, he launches into screaming and having hysterical fits designed to control the situation by shutting you down and deflecting the consequences of his actions away from him. Hey, does this sound familiar? Why the change? He changed his tune because his initial tactic didn't work. You didn't do what he wanted you to do, which was to accept his apology and simply forget he lied with no hard feelings. The fact that this is the umpteenth time he's lied to you about the same thing doesn't matter to him. The fact that he obviously is not actually sorry doesn't matter to him either. He's apologized and you need to accept it. If you don't, you're abusing him. He will continue to change his tactic until something does work. Apologizing didn't work, so now he changes to denial. He didn't really lie. You just think he did because you're stupid, you're crazy, unreasonable, and controlling, blah, 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 etc. If this particular strategy doesn't work, he will change from attacking you from claiming you are attacking him. You're only saying he lied because you hate him so much. He can't do anything right or make you happy because you're cruel and abusive. When this tactic doesn't work, he reacts with meltdown designed to guilt or frighten you into doing whatever he wants. This might entail violence either toward himself or you screaming, crying, or any combination of emotional dysregulation. Here is why something interesting often happens. If the final meltdown doesn't work, If you stand there and watch his hysteric stone face cold without backing down, he will calm down and start at at the beginning and apologize. In fact, if the argument continues long enough, 
you will see him go through the same cycle of manipulation tactics over and over again. It's all he knows to do. He can't take responsibility for what he's done, though he probably thinks his apology covers that. He cannot understand or care that he hurt you and he cannot see that he's done anything wrong. All he can do is try to control you by either telling you what he thinks you want to hear or using guilt, violence, and having a fit to bulldoze you into whatever he wants you to do. None of it is real, except possibly the anger that you see. Everything these people say is designed to manipulate, control, and force you to do whatever they want you to do. Remember, however far he has to go to escalate it, Whatever he has to do, con control the situation and make to make you do whatever he wants you to do. That's how far he's going to take it. Remember, when dealing with these issues, use your superpowers, which is your silence and sticking with your boundaries. Letting all my victims of narcissistic abuse know that I'm praying for you and I'm sending you all a big hug. I'm here for you, so I want you to be able to bring content that meets your needs. So if you have any questions that you would like for me to answer or you have a topic that you would like for me to do an episode on, please let me know. Anyone that has questions for me and need one-on-one -on -one coaching, please hit me up at heycoachcookie at gmail.com. To all my listeners out there, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. This is Coach Cookie sending you all a big hug and reminding you to love yourself first as we rise higher together. Be blessed and I'll talk to you soon.